and welcome to Tools in the Shed. It's a podcast powered by Cars Guide and we are ready to rip any car stuff that's caught our eye this week. I'm James and with me is Mel. G'day James. And Tom. Yo. And uh, this week we're looking at an Aussie automotive dream that's set to come true. And we'll visit the garage and discuss the cars that have been passing through it this week, although Tom's going to throw those rules out the window and talk about cars that we're going to drive soon. But that's yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. We make up the rules. Um, and we'll catch up with a bony, bona fide time traveller in this week's Must Watch. So stay with us. But first of all, we've had some feedback and all of it is terrific. So at comments at carsguide.com.au, Lembert Leave said... I thought respected car testers like you would not mix cars from Mitsubishi with Suzuki badge engineered ones. And we have collectively been racking our brains as to what that comment refers to, and we've come up empty. Mm. We, I know we were talking about Holden's, I mean, for example, the, the Drover. Uh, the Drover and the Scurry with the Drover Suzuki, and the Scurry being the Suzuki ones. We're just not getting the Mitsubishi connection. I'm wondering, yeah, as I said to James before, I'm wondering whether they wound up in... Indonesia wearing Mitsubishi badges. Oh, okay. Or who knows where. <laughs> That's where I mean, Mel's mind goes. What we do know is that the J- the Japanese brands are particularly uh, special with badge engineering right oh, yeah. now, particularly in the K cars. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in that a Suzuki could wear all, you know, he, Honda There's Suzuki a Suzuki wearing right. a, a Mazda badge, that the Suzuki Hustler, which we're all fans of. Right. Uh-huh. You can now get a Mazda version. It's pretty cool. The uh, the Jimny the the Jimny that was replaced last year, so the one that was around for twenty years, there was a Mazda version of it in Japan. Oh, how wow! Cool. Yeah, I, I didn't fantastic. know that. Okay, well, Lembert, we need a bit Mazda more. Something. We <laughs> just need which. a bit more context, and <laughs> yeah. then we can more comprehensively respond to your feedback. But thank you for it, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Now, Garth Rudlin says. Hi, bull riders. I think we were making a um, reference to mechanical bull riding, either in the last one oh, or the one. Rodeos, right. rodeos. Rodeos. That's right. Rodeos. Can rodeo. I chuck in? We didn't talk about uh, Rodeo Drive. I wonder what the deal is with the Dre- Rodeo Drive. Given I think it's, it's Rodeo Drive mm. is how it's more typically pronounced. We were mm. just talking about pronunciation of the Holden Rodeo yeah. or Rodeo. Mm-hmm. Everyone called it Rodeo. Anyway. But the Americans hot, say rodeo. They do. For bull riding things. Yes. Mm. And... Anyway, yeah, I'm look, finished. Garth says, <laughs> hi, bull riders. My favourite Holden was the design tour de force, the effigy, and the Tirana mm. TT36 was great also. Not a fan of the Epica and Malibu, and he feels for the dealers and workers. He says it's a warning that to be successful in the global scheme of things, your brand focus cannot be one model. So, I mean, he's really saying that Holden became the Commodore car company. And once that mm. kind of fell into a hole, the whole thing collapsed around it. I think that's pretty And true. we've had the conversation many times about how in that critical time when they were, you know, the switchover was happening from sedan to SUV, they burned people with the cap table. But looking at the bigger picture, even if Commodore was the best-selling car in Australia, it still collectively, you know, the Holden badge product would still represent this in the Holden Empire. Well, that's true. So when GM de- – oh, sorry, the GM Empire. So when GM decides to stop right-hand drive production – a big success for us is still a tiny success oh, for GM. So. Ma- most definitely. You know. Yeah, drop in the ocean, all drop those kind of ocean. analogies. Yeah, it's and the Epica, all, Epica it's all was a, a bit weird. I mean, it wasn't very good, but it's it was very weird it was and not weird. very good. Straight, straight six engine, front wheel drive. How weird. Mm, four stud wheels yeah. with a six. Well, I think when did you last the, see that? Uh, the Impala in the States is front wheel drive, isn't it? It's yep. like a super big car. And they did a V8, drive. an LS yeah. V8 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Impala. Yeah. All right. Now, on YouTube, we had some commenters. And Bartonez123 says, I'm loving the magic book that you can see, th- that can see through time and space. Uh, they were really head of the game back in the 80s. This is when Mal, Mal has a magic book um, <laughs> that on the one hand is a workshop manual. It's from my kids' TV hand, show, I also do. It's like the magic circle club. You can see through it and go to another land. Uh, what? It, look, it's all. Oh, did you, you haven't watched last week's episode. It's I haven't watched do, last week's. It's all to do with this it, fallacy that we're somehow operating in a green screen environment. And oh this yeah, this book happened to be green. It's all. They should look, smell the oil in. Coincidences there. happen. All right, yeah, it, it was, was just Mel happened to have a magic and book. workshop residue that was evident. <laughs> <laughs> now David Burt says the most famous Holden brand was Frigidaire. The first house I bought in the mid-80s had a beautiful Frigidaire stove, proudly stating a product of General Motors Holden. <laughs> and what a great pickup that is, <laughs> that straight. Frigidaire was a General Motors Holden brand. I think that might have been around World War II. Was it? Maybe. Yeah. It was 
I mean, when else do you go, oh, geez, we won't make cars, let's make what, what goods? It's a brand name that um, I'm aware of. I don't mm. know. I'd, I'd heard of Frigidaire for yeah, sure. I've seen one for sure. Have you? I don't own one. but uh, mm. yeah. you, I bet you'd love to. You would love to acquire oh, come a Frigidaire. On, who wouldn't want to have a Holden Beach <laughs> fridge? <laughs> exactly. All right. imagine be very efficient. What would the star rating be? Touch Star, Touch Star <laughs> 68 says a collective of journalists. I'd oh, said dear. that a collective term for journalists is a whinge of journalists. Mm. Right? And he says a collective term for journalists is a, a pool. And obviously a derogatory term would be a cesspool of journalists. I thought, I thought, it, I thought it would be a, a conference. A conference of journalists. <laughs> like, wouldn't it? Not bad. Press conference. Not bad. Mm. Now, de Kook says, uh, look, he's shed a tear. Um, thinking about uh, acquiring his midlife crisis, HSV Malou, it starts to make less, sense for him, uh, less and less sense for him. Um, but now once things uh, started to get real, that uh, for him it was like, mm. oh, I was going to have a Holden Malou, but uh, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, and what else does he say? There, then came this bombshell. Let's see how things develop with servicing network, etc. RIP Lion. So... De Kook won't be far off. He'll be. He's coming to Australia, I think, in March mm. from uh, Germany. All right. To visit us specifically? or uh, Richard. I think he's staying with Richard, <laughs> and then Richard will uh, show him the sights <laughs> right. uh, from there. Chaperone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rico says, I'd like to nominate the Holden Zafira for particular mention with their mm. Flex 7 yeah. seats. Hats I believe off. it beat the Honda Jazz with its flat-folding rear seats to market. And, Mal, I know you responded to that. On YouTube, that uh, that's another great pickup. That's, that's a great tidbit, and it's symbolic of a time when Opal was really investing in practicality and in you know innovation and engineering. Yep. You know. Yeah. Gee, yeah. Wow. I remember seeing a couple of those as uh, disabled cabs. Really. Holden Zafira, yeah. Because yeah. it was a pretty like it was was not a big car. Yeah. yeah. The space efficiency in there was incredible. And that size and shape of uh, people mover was very important for Europe before. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. Recent times. All right, and lastly, Bob a job uh, came out and said that he enjoyed last week's podcast, but he was disheartened by so many keyboard warriors sinking the boot into Holden over the last few years. He prefers to focus on what Holden did for our history and culture. Uh, he'd forgotten about the scurry and calls out How the dare. Mazda Road Pacer as a special delivery oh, yeah. outside of Australia. So most of our viewers, I'd imagine, will know the Road Pacer, HG Premier. With a 13B oh, rotary. Oh, no, 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 no. H- not H- H- HJ. HJ. I think HJ. Oh, no, not HG. HJ, yeah. sorry. At, at least uh, it was one of the HJ. HJ, HJ or H- HX. HX. With a 13B Mazda rotary in there mm. as a premium car. Mal pointed out when we were discussing this that it, speaking of fridges, had a fridge in its boot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, that, was, that was one of those things where um, the they... Uh, like Mazda had to hop into sort of what it could internationally to try and make up for a hole in its lineup in Japan, right? Yeah. Where they had, what was it, Mitsubishi President was Oh, sure, and the Toyota flagship, Century. And, Toyota yeah, Century, yeah. 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 Which, And the Century, Nissan, I think, Nissan was the V12. Which may yeah. have Nissan had President? a Mitsubishi version. Oh, so what was the, what was the Mitsubishi called? It had a cool name. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> if you I'm, know, put it in the comments. Uh, uh, Debonair. De- Debonair? Is that one of them? Might have been. People will know. Debonair will know. I'll put it in the comments. Don't worry. He also says, now I think um, our friend Bobber Job is a former Holden Insider because he says, not sure how many people know that the Cadillac CTS was 100% ready for launch until the uh, first news of the GSC broke and New Zealand immediately got a special delivery of 250-odd cars mm. that were ready to go through GM uh, premium brands. And he also says, and the insignia was also so close we could smell it uh, to launch as a Holden but the exec got nervous about it being more relevant to new markets than Commodore, so it got parked up. Mm. So that's interesting too, isn't it? I think what he means there is the because the insignia replaced the Vectra. Yes, and we eventually got the insignia wearing Opal badges, but later in its life. And I think what yep. he's saying is that we were set to get the insignia as a whole much earlier. Yeah, mm. yeah. So and that makes sense. But um, great tidbit. He says also on the underperformance of the Colorado, the business was eagerly awaiting the arrival of the all new RG in 2012. But GM's Chapter 11 bankruptcy kinked the development umbilical cord and hampered it from the word go, uh, launching with an uncompetitive four-star ANCAP rating and never really climbing out of the rut. So many stories, Holden. You helped paint the fabric of Australia. Thank you. So that was fantastic. Just a 
a little insight into the stuff that goes on you, oh, from in, from the inside. From the inside, and like you, you tend to get this polished version of events, and this is how it went down. And then it's it's just a bunch of people like the rest of us uh, trying to get on and do the best job they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I've said in this podcast before. I think we should just be grateful they managed to hang on as long as they did. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, the main topic of conversation today is that we unearthed during the week the fact that Toyota Australia has registered the name GR for Hilux GR. So you GR Hilux. I, I beg your pardon, Mel. GR Hilux. All important. Um, obviously, pointing towards a performance-focused, gruntier version of the Hilux. Now, we should point out that it's just registration of the name. Toyota's mm-hmm. come back and said, we do this from time to time mm-hmm. just to keep the ground clear in case we want to go down certain paths from a marketing strategy and product point of view. But uh, it's a pretty big clue that they're going to fight back against the likes of a Ford Raptor, mm. um, an Entrek Warrior, uh, with possibly a, Hil- a GR Hilux. Did mm. I get that right now? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Well, no, it does make a difference, though, because they were very big on saying if it was going to get the GR treatment, yep. it would be GR Hilux and it would have a significant performance jump, right? Right. Ooh. So, but we need to read between the lines there. Performance isn't just power. Yes. Look at the Raptor. It's suspension. got a performance jump and then it's yeah. got suspension, etc. cetera. Yep. But no extra power. That's so, right. do, do the fingers cross like they a, actually mean more power. Do, do the buyers care? Because, like, at the end of the day, you get out there, Raptor has caused such a stir, and yeah, sure, yeah. you've got a million keyboard warriors, as someone pointed out, getting out there and saying, oh, two liter engine, whatever, but still, they're selling plenty of them, and yeah, it's created true. such a rush that now you've got Toyota going out there, you've got Nissan going out there, you've got everyone rushing to try and go, oh my God, there's a whole market yeah. segment which we are behind on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many more do you think they would sell if they did have more performance? Maybe not even that many, right? Mm. Maybe Volkswagen, there's a price Volkswagen's getting a good reaction from V6 Amarok. Mm. They've really led the the charge there. I find it interesting that you know you can spend the same money, V6 Amarok or uh, the Ranger Raptor, and it's just two sides of a different yeah. coin. One no. is one is power, and Give one us is one with both. <laughs> Give us Toyota, one with both. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I want go. the one with neither. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want the low power, no, <laughs> you know, special suspension. And Actually, James doesn't I'm want to in buy a four it. by two workmate. Yeah, four, four by two low <laughs> rider, single cab, single cab. Yeah. yeah, yeah, petrol with bunny stickers on the doors. And I'll just keep cab chassis. I won't even put anything on the back of it. <laughs> Make it completely useless. <laughs> but Mel, you had some thoughts on on this. So, yeah. So, um, sorry, I do have some thoughts. Uh, so they said no, no, no performance question mark on whether that means power. Yep. But um, we should also reflect that we've recently seen the GR Sport appear for South America, which is basically just a V6 Hilux with uh, some visual enhancements. You mean South Africa? Did I? What did I say? You said South America. I thought it was South America. I think it's South Africa. Okay. It's a right-hand drive car because anyway, there was a not bit of, here. Yeah. And for those on YouTube, we'll probably have some vision of that one um, up behind us while we're talking. Yep. South America, V6 powered. And uh, it's the old four liter V six. Yeah, which, okay. With um, the same right. outputs we had here when before it got cancelled, because no one was buying it. One hundred and seventy five right. kilowatts, three hundred and seventy five newton meters yeah. for anyone interested. Yep. Um, also, uh, the Dakar Hilux has been wearing GR uh, mm. livery for some years now. Yep. Uh, I'd also like to point out that the Dakar Hilux has a five liter V eight petrol yes. V eight. Yeah. From the GSF RCF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty swish V eight. Mm. Gee, if only we had a racing category with five litre V8 engines. Hmm. Um, Mel's going for a mashup between the yeah. Paris Dakar and Bathurst. Yeah. I think that would be, actually, if you could have sand dunes yeah, sort that's of it. halfway down Conrad Strait, something yeah. like that. So you, if we you just divert off to an off road bit, get some offer serious... me any argument against that. That would be a, it's a, it's the rally cross Bathurst 1000. This is like that bad. would be amazing. This is like could they could they flood the Colosseum and do faux naval battles in there? Yeah, this is like I think they did, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, well, there sharks. Are, some suggestion. Yeah. I think yeah. we've just solved supercars problem with the com- the Holden's departure. It's a, That's U- it. It's Get a some Earth Perry movers Decker in there. Ute based rally cross mm. style one thousand kilometer. Yep, encourage some curve hopping. Imagine the chase, the gravel traps. People would th- think the race could keep going. Think of the lack of safety cars. Yeah, if this. V8 Hilux could climb its way out of the gravel trap at the end of Celtic. Instead chase. of having to pull in for a pit stop for fuel, you have to pull in and 
knock up a pergola or something like that, you know, <laughs> or, or, uh, or pitch a tent or something uh, yeah, as an that, added element. That could be the workmate class. Yeah, it could be. Bring back class-based racing. Class-based, yep. workmate, you've got your 4 by 2s 4 4, four by One's two. a cab four. chassis, one's a tub truck. How do they yep. survive the sand, four by two, four The by hard four. work's all done. If you're a 4 by 2 low rider, how do you get through the sandy bits? Uh, you don't. You don't. Separate course. Separate you're a, course. You're a, yeah, so yeah. you get the fuel consumption advantage, yeah. whereas the Viet ones can climb out of the gravel. Are That's, they, are they, are they petrol? Knows? Are they all petrol? Is that what we're talking Probably. Probably, right? Yeah, well, they're mostly V8. Yeah. You'd have but to you line up a diesel, diesel sponsor. Yeah. Either way, I think we just laid out I think we've done it. The hard work's done. Yeah, Supercars. Cool, great. Yeah. Just call us up. Talk There's to us a, about the details yeah, later. I do have we'll we'll draw up a contract. It's fine. Yeah. So that, you know, does GR need to have a motorsport link? So the first proper GR we have seen has been the GR Yaris, yep. and it's pretty close links to WRC. Yes. Um, the Corolla we know is coming. Uh, there is, there's no Corolla in TCR, mm. I'm surprised to see, but there is a, a Corolla in BTCC, yep. but it is front-wheel drive naturally aspirated, I believe. Um, the, Supra, the Supra is a GR, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and no one's racing that. Oh, oh, they have a GT3. GT, GT4. GT4? GT, okay. they, they have a GT car that can be purchased. Yeah, anyway, the more motorsport links, the better, I think. Uh, particularly if someone manages to wrangle the word homologation in there. Yes, has, has anyone yeah. seen yeah. the for um, success? A Japanese, touring, um, Japanese touring series uh, Prius? It looks awesome. Yes, I have it's seen it. It's the coolest looking... Current model? Yeah. It looks, they race it? It looks... No, it's... Just, well, yeah, but it's it's not a Prius. Yep. It just has like a Prius like body, but they've like flattened it and stretched it and it looks so mean. How Is strange it? that something like that would happen in Japan. I know. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh bottom line. More performance models from Toyota is yes. surely a good thing. Well, I suppose the operative thing is that GR it's racing, Gazoo racing, yeah. So there's some element of Yes, it might be the suspension, but you'd have to think there'd be some little yeah. tweaks to the engine. Once again, well, Raptor yeah? is wearing Ford performance stickers everywhere. Mm. Yeah, 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 good. And point. and there's some suggestion now that you know Raptor might be st- trying to stay ahead of that game by putting the Mustangs V8 in. Mm. Although um, Ford Australia was keen to sort of put some play that. Yeah, put some water on that <laughs> as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, we've well, got a great story from our Mister Chesterton uh, suggesting that we'll take until the next generation if it happens. Mm. Yeah, mm. and that makes sense to me. Can you imagine the work involved in getting sure. that V8 in there? You know, the, getting all the safety compliance, getting the cooling system engineered, transmission, it, all that business that costs millions of dollars. I think at a, at a kind of strategic level, we were in the podcast recently talking about how. There's been such rapid fire introduction of new variants of all of the Utes because that market is exploding mm. that Toyota's almost fallen off the pace. You know, they, they launched all, they didn't keep any powder dry, came out with uh, your Rugged and your Rugged X and the other one, whatever that's called, and bang, Rogue. the Rogue. So they're all out there. Meantime, other brands come up with, with theirs yeah. and Toyota's kind of it's timely if they were able to come up with something fresh but Although, from their point of view they're still the best selling one exa- oh, good point. exactly yes, absolutely yeah. true. Ma- yes. maybe it goes to show you know if you've got the core range if you've got the core fan base maybe it doesn't matter so much yeah you know yeah, like, like you point. can go out there and shout about performance models and it looks really good in the media when you're like the ford for example they, they seem to come up with a new thing every every three to six months on the yeah, raptor sure. on the yeah. ranger yeah there's a new ranger yeah. oh, it's got a new grill it's got a sticker pack it's got yeah. this yeah. it's, it's got, got that. sync 12 yeah and you know toyota could have done that with their Thing. You know, they could have bled those models out over yeah. a long time, but it was just a strange marketing choice to go, eh, there they are, take them or leave them. I think the range has been helped by having the American version. Mm. So they did a lot of re-engineering and, you know, pre- preparing it for the US market, and I think we just kind of scored some, some yes. of the fridge benefits of that. I so think they've got the EcoBoost one, which is very cool. EcoBoost petrol. I, I would love to have a go in that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> we, we, we... No one would buy so one here. Seats. We unashamedly Maybe, get uh, sucked into that vortex occasionally. Like, you know, we turned up to the uh, Mustang Aspect launch uh, to drive the car that's already sold out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it's because we know our readers are going to want to know what it's like to yeah. experience uh, mm. that car. And there may be a follow-up run and, and who knows. Exactly. They didn't shut the door on doing more of those yeah, cars yeah. because when they came up with them, they knew that they would be popular and they knew that there was a really good chance that they would sell out almost instantaneously. So they said, look, we're not going to shut the door on doing more. And it's a similar formula to the Navara Entrick Warrior where they've taken a car that's built elsewhere, they've brought it in, some local engineers have made some changes and they've managed to still sell it for yes. a, a you know a, a realistic price uh-huh. from the factory with a factory warranty which yeah. is a big b- yep. bigly important and yeah. 
bottom, yeah, the, the key words there are local engineers. Yes. And uh, Australia's All right, so product. suffice it to say, we're pretty excited by the prospect of a GR version of the Hilux, of, mm. you know, top-selling car in the market. Mm. Was there anything else you had in your locker there, Mel? James, done. Very good. No, you're done. Okay, done. good. <laughs> Thank All you right. for asking. Well, 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 I mean, wow. No props. I something else was <laughs> The only thing I'd say is, you know, what engine do, does Toyota have to to bring from for that vehicle? You've got that 5-litre V8. Good point. Yep. You've got the old 4-litre, which is, seems unlikely, yeah, right, for yeah. our market. Oh, I'd love to see a 2-litre turbo petrol. Mm. Like, yep. You know, that 2-litre engine that came with the Corolla. Uh, are we seeing a turbo version yet? I'm not sure, but it's so going to happen. Yep. And it would be just... Like the car weighs two tons. Yes. Uh, and if uh, we've seen what they're about to screw out of a 1.6 litre three cylinder, so um, yeah, you know, my, yeah. my my only thought on that is, um, will that torpedo its chances of being as successful? Because I think one of the beauties of Ranger, you know, as much as people complain about the fact that it doesn't have that performance engine, it's still a diesel. Yeah. And I think diesel's so big in Australia in that class. But look at what they're achieving with petrol efficiency. Mm, yeah. Elsewhere, and we're kind of watching this, you know, diesel having a bit of a whiff about it, you know, around the world. I don't know. I don't know. Someone's going to do it. Maybe that's a new lease of life for Prius if they could do a Ute version of uh, of Prius. I've got an angle grinder. The the Prius exactly. pickup. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. We could make I a one off. Yeah. If people can make a, you know, Tesla Cybertruck, we can make a Prius Ute. I, th- I think Prius is. Prius Land LA. Wow. Like a <laughs> Love closer. It. We just extend it a bit and have a soft top the back half of the roof. Yeah, uh, or a bit of roof for the driver and I nothing was thinking for everyone else. Prius is in a, a funny position at the moment because it's one of those cars that needs something entirely new to keep yeah, it relevant. A like, ute and a land yeah. delay. A, a ute, fully electric ute. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I think I just destroyed everyone's eardrums. Um but do they need a Prius? It's the bigger question. No, no, well, it probably probably purpose. not. But yes, it served its purpose. Mm. But could it live on? I mean, this is my thought, right? They've done it with the the Mirai. Mirai. Yeah. Um, it's now got this kind of entirely new look. And maybe Prius, you know, instead of sit there and say, oh, okay, Prius lived its life and introduced everyone to hybrid. Hybrid is now, that in technology is now in every Toyota, almost. Um, mm. You know, now do we say, okay, well, the next Prius is maybe hydrogen or it's fully electric or, you know, it's that kind of next generation of... That's the Mirai's job, I though. think that's Yeah, it. could, I, could I be I think the, the Mirai is the next Prius. Looks cool, though, come breaking, up with breaking the ice and Abracadabra, yeah. which symbolises... The petrol Toyota Abracadabra. Yeah. What is that? It's got the perpetual motion engine. Oh, fantastic. Great. Gotcha. You heard it here first. Yeah, that'll yep. be a market breakthrough. And you don't even <laughs> bugger the fueling infrastructure. Yeah. You don't need any. You don't need it. Yeah. yeah. Where we're going, we don't need refueling infrastructure. Whatever Abracadabra is in Japanese, I think it would be. Okay. We'll Great. have to look that up. Right. Now, on that note, we're going to move on <laughs> <laughs> to cars in the garage. But sadly, we're going to stick with Mel. And, uh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> no. Uh, you have been in a car of the mini uh, variety, Mel. Tell us what you've been in. Uh, car of the mini variety, but not mini in stature. Yes. Uh, in that it is the Clubman, so yep. the longest uh, of the kind of hatchy minis, even though it doesn't actually have a hatch. It's got barn doors. It's got barn doors at the back, yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, By the way, I get my seal Which I portal. noticed yeah. driving the car that, that we have had during the week, and I put the rear wipers on, and it's two little wipers that go on the <laughs> on the windows. Like, that so is amazing. cute. Yeah. A bit like the wide-body Camry wagon. Yes. It had, it had. Did it have more than two? No, it had two. Two. Okay. On and I think the, the FJ Cruiser had three front wipers. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It did. Uh. <laughs> anyway. All right. So the Mini. Pretty uh, striking car. Was the Clubman JCW, which yep. is the most powerful Mini we've seen in Australia. Uh, 225 kilowatts. Uh, I think it's 450 newton metres. Numbers That's familiar. So That's a lot. So much. <laughs> that seems like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Numbers very familiar from the BMW M135i, which uh, it's the same engine. Uh, it's also got the all-wheel drive system from the, the Bimmer and mm-hmm. under the skin. They're pretty much the same car. Yeah. Uh, but it's really nice. It's a nice drive. I think it's the epitome of that. Because uh, you drove it too, didn't you? I did. Yeah. That mini adage, go-kart feeling. You know, yeah. these cars must have go-kart feeling. And there are some minis, I've got to admit, to having driven and go, oh, I'm not really getting the go-kart feeling. Yep. That thing, yeah. you betcha. I reckon a lot great. of it comes from, and I've always been a fan of the current Clubman in the way it drives. Mm-hmm. I reckon a lot of it comes from just being wider. Right. Mm. So you, uh, you get the feeling of sitting lower and wider, and it just feels more like a... 
go kart. Super planted, is even it though it's bigger. Is it yeah. still like overtly firm? I don't think so. Okay, I really don't think so. I've always found the Clubman to somehow ride quite well, even yeah. on massive wheels. I'd agree with that. I yeah, thought okay. it was pretty, it's, pretty livable for sure. Uh, it, yeah, um, interesting. But um, I've never been a fan of the, the current Clubman from behind. Um, mm. Anyway, but uh, it's the most practical. It's got a decent boot. It's got a decent back seat. Yep. The barn doors are interesting in that they really... You, you've got to shut them in sequence, which is annoying, and you uh. just know that someone's going to shut the wrong side wrong first way. and smash Make a huge dent, point. yeah. And you're not going to be wanting to, rel- wanting to re- be related to that person anymore. Right, right. Uh, but uh, right. They, they really... That's how s- things work in the Flynn family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, you've been evicted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you shut the wrong barn door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're out. <laughs> um... Anyway, uh, but the, yeah, the barn doors really just fling out at you when you yeah. when you open it. So yeah. they're they're not sort of spring loaded, uh, motorized. I think it's more of a, a ram assisted. Assisted, they just go really. Yoy, yoy. really? So really? you don't want to be parked too close to anything sort of adjacent to, or like have a toddler too close. Oh dear, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I nearly took out a toddler's head. <laughs> wow. To be truthful, that's quite, that's quite an admission to make on. Yeah, not well, quite to live be honest, radio. You push the button, but <laughs> kids loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. They came out onto the driveway and just went, oh, my God, look at this thing. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, look, they, they really do have a distinctive look. They yeah. Do. And they're kind of, they look friendly and they're fun. You know, playful. I've got to say, for what it's worth, I reckon Mini, from a design point of view, has done a great job of evolving that new Mini idea, where the new ones don't necessarily make the earlier ones outcasts. It just builds on that kind of design heritage. Yeah. You look at an original Mini from whatever, 15 years ago, and go, yeah, it still looks yeah. fresh as, you know, and the new ones. Little touches like those circular DRLs in the in the laid-back headlights really yeah. give it a, a new personality. Yep. But the whole line looks broadly the same, you know? Just imagine the job of designing the next Mini. Mm. Make it look just like a Mini, but make it look new. Yeah. And it's make tricky. it look good. Yeah, hard. Oh, what a challenge. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What an absolute... Oh, and also or, or... make a, a long one with barn doors. Oh, and make an SUV. <laughs> oh, and remember when they made a, like a... The two door coupe. Oh yeah, and and the little the, roadster, the one. Rocket Man, which is a you know two door countryman basically. But yeah. as well, I think there's a bit of you know that was it the Rocket Man, no, I, I, which was the What's Mini it? Mini. That ah, uh, what was the? But that the two door countryman, that little roadster, and the the, two, oh, the tiny two door. They sold here, but really didn't sell here. Ah, oh, Paceman. Paceman. Thank yeah, you, Tom. Paceman. Well done. That's right. It was like a two door. Yeah, SUV. country with a weird little like coupe back. Yeah. And, yeah. Um. What I was going to say was I think they've sort of been to the school of Porsche 911 of just very Ooh, gradually, yeah. it's very carefully. Much the same. You're yeah. right, yeah. You're absolutely right. But also I think to those comments about multiple variants, I think Mini went all BMW. Like mm, there were a few yeah. BMW people that went into Mini and go, right, now we do the uh, SUV, now we do the coupe, yeah, now we do the yeah, Roadster, now yeah. we do the two-door SUV. What are you doing? But and that's all been reeled in a bit. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, that, that reaction it, it incited from my kids really gave me faith that the brand has potential. Good. You know, that yeah, if great. you can impact people who don't know what they're looking at uh, and get that design right, that design evolution right, that's the challenge. But Terrific. And that's what so many Japanese automakers have tried to do with like fun models, you know, yeah. to get that wow factor in. Yeah, it's just it Nissan comes did a great job in the late eighties. Yeah. yeah, well, it comes seamlessly to Pal and B right? one yeah. and all that Agree, stuff. agree. Yeah. So anyway, oh, that's, a, that's all I've got. James. Very good. Okay, <laughs> now <laughs> so I always off. need to check. Um, now, <laughs> no props this week, James. Tom. You're going to tear up the rule book where yes. this car or these cars have not been in our garage. Yes. But they will be soon. That imminently. You had an opportunity to chat with people at Subaru. Tell us what you turned up. Yeah, so um, it was a launch event for right. uh, the hybrid versions of the Subaru Forester and XV, uh, which have been long awaited. Uh, they've been talking about doing it for quite some time. Um, and there were no cars to drive because, and there's a supposedly good reason for it, is that they've sold every single last one of them. So you can't, they've launched this car, it's not even in dealers yet, and you can't buy one until May because they've sold so many that they now have a backlog already. Was that because they only had three of them? You know, <laughs> no, well, what, like, what it was, kind of volume did they have? It was or? interesting. On the day, they had the big setup and they had, oh, I don't know, um, X amount of foresters. There were, there were a few, yep. um, but they said, uh, you know, please don't, scratch any of them because they're all going customer to cars customers right <laughs> um, so uh, but the 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 numbers are um the the subaru's problem for a long time has been supply because someone at 
the uh, conference asked, they said, oh, you know, are you concerned about the downturns in the Australian market? And they li- pretty much literally laughed it off and said, no, we li- we can't get enough cars out of our factory to sell them all because the uh, factory's at capacity. And first they got hit by stink bugs. Then they got hit by a typhoon. And now they've been hit by having to split their supply line over hybrid and the regular range. Mm. Um, so... The deal is um, they can only get 150 cars per month to Australia o- across both Forester and XV, only 150 cars per month, and they were a bit vague on the split of those 150 cars, um, but they said they already have a backlog of 700. Wow. So you can't even look at one probably in a dealer <laughs> until May. Right. Um, yeah, so... and and. It was interesting talking to them and finding out the reasons for that. So um, y- you might think that, oh, you know, some hybrid variants fly under the radar and whatnot, but um, they were say- they pretty much placed the blame solely on RAV4 and said RAV4 has been so successful in changing that perception, swinging the pendulum towards uh, the ex- widespread acceptance of hybrid models that um, they got overwhelmed by um, offers to more like a, a wanting to buy one, I suppose. That's a, that's an interesting litmus test, isn't it? That for a lot of people, once Toyota's doing it, yeah, it's mainstream. I can trust it. It becomes more palatable. Yeah, yeah. And so, just to be clear, these are series hybrids. So you've got a petrol engine and electric motor, and they kind of pop in and out like a Prius. Yes, Work, works a bit different. So um, there was the question asked: um, Is it? Toyota hybrid drivetrain technology given how closely Subaru and Toyota have been working together but it's something developed by Subaru uh, on its own and it is different from the Toyota system and they explain those differences they said that uh, the Subaru um, ha- uh, Su- Subaru has its own battery pack that's designed to fit specifically in those cars it's a lithium ion battery pack not a nickel hydride thank one. goodness so it should be yep and um, I mean, not for the environment it but, turns uh, out that the electric motor is um, in the CVT like it's sort of inside it. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's not one that's straight on the wheels or it's not one that's on a rear axle or something. It's it's inside the transmission. So it's got its own way of doing that. And, th- and that, the way yeah. they pitch that... Well, so, would, they say. So, the, <laughs> so they say. So they say. Did you pull it apart and check? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I asked the Mr. Engineer Bring your bolts, man, your, your, your yeah. spanners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brought, brought my socket set. And, and some bolts. Yeah. And some bolts. Well, Just to put something extra on there. It's to have some spares. Yeah. I made sure I... <laughs> Well, actually, that's the other interesting thing. Because I was going to say, I was going to say, I made sure I put the spare wheel under when I jacked it up. But they don't have spare wheels anymore, which is one of the downsides. Yes. So, because um, the lithium lithium ion pack takes up the, yep. the rest of the room. But they will have a puncture repair kit. They have a puncture repair kit. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, re- so really interesting times about Subaru, and they did yeah. drop some really interesting um, uh, sort of truth bombs in there. <gasps> we love a good truth, truth bomb. bomb. I know We're all about does. to be covered in fact shrapnel. Oh, God. (laughs) Truth bomb. Come on, pull the pin. All right, so... Light the wick. They flicked up this slide, which we've just written a new story on. It's up on Cars Guide. You can go have a look on our news section, but... um they they flicked up this slide when um, when they had their Japanese ex- executives up there bringing in the like the big news from um, Subaru HQ and it was that um, basically they have this really detailed phase out plan for uh, combustion engines and it was it was down to each they had like a little kind of time bracket for where they're going to introduce and phase out everything in the next in the next few years all the way up to 2030 and they said basically in 2030 there's going to be an electric version of every single nameplate and they don't want to add new nameplates just to do electric like. Like a lot of brands have done, they said, no, we're going to keep our familiar nameplates. They're going to be familiar to customers. They're still going to have all-wheel drive. But Boxer Engine, after 2030, it's going to be phased out for real. It's gone. I love that transparency. Because, yeah. I mean, I've seen Mazda showing their timelines and their acknowledgement that, you know, hybrids are, are kind of an interim solution. Um, we're talking generations here. We're not talking six months. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Mercedes as well and got plenty of others. But it's great to see Subaru... As they they must be so excited to finally offer a hybrid, yeah. To acknowledge that it's here, but there's plenty more to come. But also, like it's here, it's already sold out. Like we, like, yeah. they, it was like they couldn't believe what had happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they, they, right. they, the reception to it was so good, right? And um, yeah, so uh, they had that, and it was interesting to see as well stuff that they were just introducing now. They were f- transparent about the fact that no, it's a stopgap measure. So they said this is what they describe as like a mild hybrid solution, not kind of mild hybrid in the sense that it's got a big battery pack, like and an alternator. Yeah, fancy alternator. Um, it, it it's properly hybrid, but they described it as mild mild hybrid and said no, we're gonna f- we're gonna have this from the 2020s, and by 2030 it's phased out and it's replaced by either fully electric or what they called strong hybrid, but they they won't 
as open about right. what strong hybrid meant. That must be more electric than yes. petrol. But Maybe still the, with mo- petrol the engine a moved to range extender status. Exactly, yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. I think that, that was kind of the vibe they were giving, yeah. Um, so that was really interesting to see. And it was the same with their new 1.8 litre engine that's coming in that is rumoured to be kind of the entry point for the new WRX slash LeVorg. Um, yeah, and that 1.8 is a boxer. It's a boxer. It's a, it's a new engine. Um, but it in on this timeline it was like introduced in 2020 phase out before Amazing. 2030 so well, it's great like, for them to put it out there that yeah. Way. yeah we're, we're going to build this entire engine that is literally just going to be a stock out amazing cool. all right thank you very much tom <clears throat> all very interesting pardon me and i will chip in with the nissan navara Entrek. now tom when we're off air mm-hmm. you posed the question what is the difference between the Entrek mm-hmm. and the Entrek? Warrior, which is what Crafty calls it, yeah, but the it's warrior. actually the warrior. It's very concerning. Yes. <laughs> it's nervous. <laughs> but Mel, you might be able to shed some light on that because you attended the launch of both of those products. Yeah, tell us the difference between the Entrek and Entrek Warrior. Right. Cool. Here's the story. Strap yourselves in. Perhaps some <laughs> truth bombs. Vax shrapnel. Yep. Uh, so, right. These two cars work together. They are kind of necessary for each other to exist for Australia. So, Nissan has secured so many cars out of the Thai manufacturing facility uh, with this, uh, the Entrek interior, Entrek exterior, you know, tinted headlights, blackened uh, yep. grille instead of chrome, a whole bunch of visual tweaks. Um, and so the Entrek itself gives Nissan a range of wild track equivalent All right. for a much cheaper price. Yep. But the Entrek is what you know, is delivered to Premcar in ah. Melbourne for them to convert into a warrior. 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 I say yep. warrior. It's <laughs> yeah, very yeah. easy to slip there. <laughs> crafty. I can see Crafty. Even when he's not here, he's having his influence. <laughs> yeah, Crafty's fans slash enemies in the comments. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> so the the warrior is more like a raptor, like a, a to a lesser degree, but it still sneaks under the price of a range of wild track. Okay. So this is mm-hmm. all very exciting. Anyway, the actual physical difference uh, is the uh, the Warrior gets uh, springs and dampers, um, gets a bespoke tow bar, gets all-terrain uh, tyres, proper all-terrain tyres, uh, gets a, a one-inch smaller wheel, which gives you more sidewall mm-hmm. on the tyres. So the I think it's got a net... Uh, Ride height increase of forty something millimeters. No, oh, okay. Very, very little of it though is actual suspension travel, so it's mostly tire. But uh, it's it's a carefully chosen, engineered, cohesive package that actually works really nicely. Yeah. And they've managed to do it at a really good price. Yeah, and There's right. a few other visual tweaks. It gets bespoke stickers. Um, what else? But no more power. Yeah. That's, no more power. Yeah. Once again, mm. you're dead right. Um, it has you know a, a take the payload takes a, a hit. Obviously, because you've got more weight in the car, that's what always happens. You know, the uh, if you look at the spec sheets, the the two door single cab always has a greater payload than the four wheel drive dual cab tub tray, just because the, it's the same chassis underneath, the same axles, etc. But the body is much lighter on a two door single cab. Well, there are some things that make me curious that with, with these you know higher performance Ute models, that you'd think that there were there were some mild kind of levers to pull in terms of engine tune. You know, you can do an ECU flash and maybe yeah. a, a, like a, a sportier exhaust that actually gives you a slight power bump. And you think yeah. that'd be enough but for some people? That's where your dodgy brain goes, though, Tom. It is. So you yeah. just said, oh, we'll just do a flash tune. Yeah, mate, that's dodgy, totally. brother. I just I just get it from the internet, USB stick. Off yeah, you go. that's right. Yeah. It's easy. Too right. It's easy to do, <laughs> but it's not easy to revalidate the and make car compliant. for yeah, emissions yeah. compliance, oh. yep, yep, yep. durability. Yeah, it's got to suit the warranty, etc. And what uh, the local team has done to create the Warrior, also impressively, is covered by all the same warranty terms. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's et cetera, so true. Yeah, as the regular Navara. Same with the Mustang Iceback. Yeah. All right. So you well, get the same amazingly. Yeah. I'll yeah. give you a quick rundown on this car, which was not the Warrior. It was the Entrek. Yeah. Um, so it's the 2.3 turbo diesel. Yep. It's 59 odd thousand dollars before you've paid on-road costs. So it's reasonable bickies for, for this thing. Um, it's 140 kilowatts, 450 newton meters. Gets along pretty well. The thing I found was it was looks pretty tough, but it's quite noisy. Mm. Um, that that's a Ute thing occasionally, but I found it. And 
It's 5.2 metres long, has a 12.4 metre turning circle. Oh, jeez. And to turn that thing around, it really is like you're at the helm of an ocean liner. It, it's, it's pretty big. Uh, I really love the interior. It's a gray, it was a grey exterior, this one, but it had like a mesh orange treatment oh, yeah. to the leather seats that looked really cool and very now. You know, I thought it was really modern uh, and appealing. I've got a neighbour on each... I've got neighbours on each side, funnily enough, but um, one of them had an STX Navara uh, and has just got rid of it. Came up... It was all over this car, like, oh, wow, this is what I'm thinking of. I really like the idea of this. And I gave him a cheeky drive around the, the block and he came back and loved it. So they might have one customer there. <laughs> and then the person on the other side is a tradie who's always at me like, oh, when am I going to have to buy an electric ute? <laughs> He's really worried about, you know, having to go to a lecky ute. Um, didn't get any feedback from him this time, but very good sounding boards in terms mm. of light commercial vehicles. But uh, the 8-inch screen, now you have your Apple CarPlay and your Android Fine, Auto. Finally. All that's very civilised. So I enjoyed my time in the mm. car just with some ute shortcomings that are kind of category wide yeah. in terms of noise and turning circle and things like that. I really like the look of it. I thought I, it was I, fun. I love the visual appeal of it. Yeah. Like seeing it in the car park, I was like, yeah. oh, it looks good. Yeah. I They've done a really good job of it. Yeah, oh, look, we've seen so many sticker packs in the past yeah. that just you know, slapping on randomly yeah. chosen stickers or something of someone else's accessory list. But, but these really just work a lot more cohesively. It feels pretty cohesive, yeah. I agree. That's a really good point. My, my favourite one that's a randomly chosen sticker is the one that's got the tyre marks that descend into rubble. Uh, that's a really common one. Don't you buy those at Super Cheap and <laughs> you Auto probably One can. and all of that? <laughs> 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 all right, now. I like to create them organically. Oh. Speaking okay. of creating, like things you drive up the side of you, <laughs> creating things organically. It's time for Musk Watch. <laughs> right, so we're gonna we're gonna rattle through the travels of the dear leader this week, and firstly, it's time travel, uh, because okay. on Twitter, Elon was talking about some SpaceX developments. He's saying. Uh, we had the wrong settings uh, to make the welds super flat and strong. We're building a heavy-duty custom plenisher, uh, but just having the right settings is a major improvement. To which the Pope of Muscanity came back and said, <laughs> "The who? You would have saved time if you had used the right settings first. Have you considered time travel to save time, <laughs> chosen one? And why were you in Canada in 1914? Why was your name Raymond Collishaw?" And why was your occupation ace fighter pilot? <laughs> now, there's a doppelganger. Okay? Oh, yeah. This Canadian pilot looks a lot like the dear leader. Yep. And for those on YouTube, we'll have images of both of those people. Could be the same person. Could be. Um, and Elon came back and said, full disclosure, I'm actually a 3,000-year-old vampire. It's such a trial, assuming all these false identities over the centuries. Yeah. So that was his comeback to that. Now, Grimes. Uh, oh, yeah. Grimes, the uh, pop artiste, has been connected with Elon for some time, and she is with child at the moment. So E! News says that the singer is sharing that she and the Tesla creator are already making plans for the future as they await the birth of their baby. For example, the 31-year-old says she's created a digital version of herself so <laughs> that even as she raises her child, she can still do shows, photo shoots, and more is without like, actually being physically present. Is this like the two-pack hologram? <laughs> this is why or they're Princess attracted Leia? to one another, because they're both Fruit Loops. And uh. then he says, uh, she says, and after I have my... Uh, she explains, Having a digital body allows me to keep working throughout the later stages of my pregnancy and after I have my baby so I can spend <gasps> more time it's with them. It's an exo them. It's hard for me to do photo shoots and fit into, into clothes at the moment, but with War Nymph... This is her digital self. Uh, War Nymph. In, is here in your magazine promoting my album for me. So War Nymph is her digital uh -huh. self. People on YouTube will be able to see a picture of War Nymph. Uh, is so that also says, her Xbox gamer tag? Could be. Yeah. War Nymph is my digital avatar, a.k.a. my digital self. Everyone is living two lives, their digital life and their offline life. I want to untether my two lives from each other for mental health purposes. Ha, mm. ha, ha. Uh, also for fun. So her real name is actually... Her real Mental name health is, is a lot of fun. Her name is Claire opinion. Elise Boucher. So she's Good changed health, it to Grimes is. and then to War Nymph. Right. So this is a person who has an equally, shall we say, complex personality. And I imagine the magnetism between she and the dear leader was inevitable. This sounds like something out of like a, a science fiction novel. Yeah. But it's happening now. It's Just, real. It's real. It's real. 
Now, also on Twitter, there was some footage of the Starship nose cone being produced in the Boca Chica, Texas facility. I thought that was right? an air conditioning duct being assembled. No, look, oh. it looks like something, and again, people on YouTube will have footage of it. It looks like something I'd build. Yeah. Fair income, it is scary. Yeah, I have a welder. Have I told you I have a welder? Yes, although, Jim, anyway. no, I bet you a welder. Although a, a lot of a lot of real space stuff does look like something knocked up in a garage. Not like this, mate. No, <laughs> crappy. Look, there are crappy but, oxy bottles. But, there are cords everywhere. Shift, shifty old witches hats. Blokes in old boiler suits. You know, just getting around with their steel caps on. And it just looks homemade. Yeah, Everything right. just even yeah. when it's put together, you can see the waviness of the different metal panels. This like is a, going like into the space. Defender. Oh, mate. As it rolled off the production line with factory and dents. The other complication is that there's been a bit of um, castle-style compulsory acquisition of houses. Well, not compulsory. As in the castle? The, yeah. The, this she's dreaming. Top Australian, dreaming. top Australian movie. Mm. He's dreaming. Tell him he's dreaming. Mm. Um, with sticks. SpaceX coming in and giving people a valuation of three times the market value of their house because they want to expand out. And Boca Chica was initially, originally going to be just this kind of backyardy development place. Now it's leading edge we're going to be testing stuff that might blow up you know, all the time yeah right so these locals in the town aren't exactly thrilled is this in florida texas okay it's in texas so different to the boca in now florida that when we focus to. on tesla the share price was 899 dollars when we checked in last week just on the cusp mm. of 900 obviously having it's, risen lots. it's at 679 dollars it's dropped a couple of hundred bucks in a week now Allegedly, this is coronavirus having its way with the market more broadly, and it's knocked the steam out of a lot of different stocks. But Wall Street's most bullish analysts are moving to the sidelines after Tesla's epic run. So mm. their recommendation broadly is hold rather than buy. So 200 bucks in a week, that's a pretty decent so is, fall. Is so that man, a pun? Uh, bullish? No. Oh. Bulls I and bears, mate. Suppose it would be hold <laughs> off of the idea that if the virus does spread further, there's further losses to be had before yeah. gains can be, could be recouped. Could be. Or it could just be that a lot of people buying Teslas have coronavirus. Yeah. I'm and not a qualified a, financial a advisor. <laughs> yeah, yes, any <laughs> advice we give uh, is our own and not yours and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now, with that, we have reached the finish line. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. And thank you, Mel. And You're welcome, And James. thanks to our technical ninja and content hero in, res in residence, Mr. Pritchard for helping us appear semi-functional. Um, he's in the Trump Stable Genius shirt, transparent waterproof shorts, and bread slippers, which is a knockout combination, honestly. Bre is bread, the material or the Bread color? slippers. They're, they're like a baguette, mm -hmm. and they're carved out. Um, so you have the crusty bit on the bottom, yep. and you slip your toe into the, you know, just baked. Oh, as piece opposed the to the Howard Hughes tissue boxes. No, that's right. That's right. No, <laughs> it's they're bread slippers. That sounds like a disaster when it comes to foot sweat. Well, but anyway, look at them. and what about oh. arch support? Yeah. Arch support. Well, maybe oh. the bread is all right. If it's a bit stale, it should be all right. What I depends thought. on the grade of bread too. Yeah, it does. Mm. Mr. Pritchard can fill us in after Density. the show. Yeah. Please pass on the word about the podcast and let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. Please do that. If you're an iTunes listener, please rate and review us. Five stars would be great. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube. But before we go, this week three of my mates uh, told me about their summer road trip. Of course, they got lost and ended up broken down on a remote track. Uh, no phone reception, so they decided to make the trek back to civilization. Davo, grabbing the esky, says, let's each take something to help us on the long walk, adding, at least we'll have something to drink. So Macca takes out the camp chairs, saying, if we get tired, we can rest comfortably. Um, finally, Baz couldn't work out what he wanted to take, and after walking in circles for a few minutes, <laughs> gets an idea and says, I'm going to take a car door. So Davo and Macca look at him sideways and he responds with, well, if it gets hot, we can just put the window down. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like Baz very much. I don't, I don't see him as much as I used to. 